Hello everyone, welcome to NPTEL online certification course on fundamentals of food process engineering. Today we will going to start a new chapter on heat exchanger. Okay. So, uh, heat exchanger is a very important uh, component or uh, equipment in most of the food process engineering, chemical engineering and uh, many mechanical engineering operation and you are familiar with many kind of heat exchanger. For example, uh, you, see, you have seen normal uh, water cooled condensers or uh, radiator. Okay. So, those are example of heat exchanger. So, uh, we will discuss today uh, definition of heat exchanger, different type of heat exchanger, analysis of heat exchanger in terms of log mean temperature difference LMTD. We will discuss it for both parallel and counter flow heat exchanger, overall heat transfer coefficient, fouling factor, correction factor, effectiveness of heat exchanger again both for parallel flow and counter flow. Apart from this we will discuss a few application of heat exchanger in food industry and also solve some numerical problems. So, this chapter uh, of heat exchanger is very important and in uh, many other chapter for example, in the last chapter when we have uh, discussed about evaporator there also uh, application of heat transfer and, and heat exchanger are involved because there also when the uh, steam and the dilute liquid which were evaporated uh, they were uh, you know they were uh, transfer heat across uh, surface area. Okay. So, across that surface area exchange of heat happens. So, that is also some kind of heat exchanger. So, uh, let us start with the topic. Okay. So, what is the heat exchanger? Okay. What kind of system can be termed as heat exchanger? So, a heat exchanger is defined as an equipment which transfer energy from a hot fluid to cold fluid without allowing them to mix. Okay. So, the basic uh, you know fundamental is that uh, there is a heat exchange surface okay. So, uh, let us say if it is a pipe through which hot fluid is coming in and going out and there is another pipe okay, which is surrounded uh, the inner tube or inner pipe. Okay. So, through which the cold fluid is flowing right. So, they are going to exchange heat over the surface of this inside tube inside the cylindrical section or the tube. So, that will be the surface area and there is no mixing between these two fluid and obviously, there will be temperature difference between these two fluid one will be uh, hot fluid and another will be the cold fluid because uh, temperature difference should be the driving force for heat flux to be uh, moved from the higher side to the lower side. So, that is the heat exchanger and another important thing is that here we get maximum heat transfer with minimum investment and running cost. So, heat exchanger is a very effective uh, equipment. Okay. So, then if you see the example intercooler which is look like this where there is 
from one side the hot fluid is entering and there is tubing inside the tube there is exit and the uh, you know very small fins are there inside uh, this system the intercooler and that will again increase the heat transfer area that uh, we will uh, a bit uh, we will discuss a bit here and maybe you have learned this in your uh, in your uh, heat transfer classes ok so this is one example of uh, heat exchanger another is condenser ok so condenser it may be air cool condenser or water cool condenser so here what happened that from the from the compressor high pressure vapor is entering here in this tube the upper tube and there are uh, coils tubes are uh, in the form of coil they are uh, fixed here in the condenser and this is the exit end from the bottom which is going to dryer the high pressure liquid ok. So, this vapor is uh, condensed here in the condenser and the heat given off from the uh, refrigerant is going to the surrounding air ok. So, that is uh, the heat is going to the air and here the temperature is not uh, changing for this condensing vapor to liquid because we know that when phase change happen then uh, only the latent heat transfer occurs. So, the temperature of this uh, vapor and the liquid that is uh, going to the uh, um, going to the dryer that are those are at same temperature ok. However, the temperature of that air will increase because it is taking the heat away. Okay, automatic radiators are there. Again, uh, regenerator. Regenerator means basically regenerators are one kind of heat exchanger where uh, heat exchange between two fluids, but phase change doesn't occur, right? So uh, therefore, we we have seen the use of uh, uh, regenerator in the milk pasteurizer. Okay. So what is the uh, uh, configuration of this regenerator this is used as a milk chiller as well. So, there are uh, plates stack of plates are attached together and between two plates one fluid is going and the other set of two plates the other fluid is going the direction is reverse most of the cases and this is very effective heat exchanger uh, we will come in detail of that. So, these are different kind of common use of heat exchanger. Okay. So, heat exchanger can be classified in many ways and some uh, can be based on nature of heat exchange process. That means, whether heat is uh, being exchanged via any surface or direct mixing of the uh, of the uh, gas and the liquid is taking place. Second is relative direction of fluid flow that means, the two stream that we are considering uh, there is a direction of flow for those two streams. So, whether the directions are parallel or counter or is there any different uh, configuration. So, based on that we can uh, divide the heat exchanger. Design and constructional features this is another criteria by which we can separate them and physical state of fluid that means, whether we are using a uh, different state or we are allowing only similar state. For example, liquid and vapor are uh, going to exchange heat or only liquid and liquid is going to exchange heat. So, first we will discuss nature of heat exchange process. So, the direct contact heat exchanger or this is called open source heat exchanger. So, direct contact heat exchanger 
that means as the name suggests that there will be mixing of the fluid okay mixing mixing of the fluid streams and another is the indirect contact heat exchanger for example uh, regenerator as we have discussed just now so what happened in case of direct contact heat exchanger this is how it looks like when steam is entering into the open source heat exchanger okay and cold water is also entering into the uh, heat exchanger so the latent heat of steam will be taken by the cold water and that is released as hot water here whereas there are many non condensable gases so that will be vented out okay so uh, this kind of a system uh, is called the direct contact heat exchanger okay and indirect contact heat exchanger that means those plate heat exchanger kind of method where uh, there is a there is no direct contact or mixing between the two stream so those two streams are going in different direction so the fluid that is entering the hot fluid which is entering from uh, one side of the channel that is coming down uh, following the uh, corrugated path of the of the plates and uh, going out of the other side whereas the cold fluid which is entering uh, from the different side and which will exchange heat via a heat exchanger surface okay so these are called the indirect contact heat exchanger uh, now we will go to the next category that is relative direction of fluid motion so this is very important because we will see that based on different direction uh, the heat transfer rate will going to affect okay so uh, sometime uh, for depending on the practical case what kind of uh, fluid what kind of direction is important uh, so considering that we need to design the heat exchanger so first is parallel flow or unidirectional flow that means the direction of the two fluid streams are similar second is counter flow that means the fluid stream are coming from two different direction or opposite direction in the heat exchanger so first we will see that the parallel flow or unidirectional flow so here we are considering a case where hot fluid hot fluid is entering from this inner tube okay so th1 is the inlet temperature th2 is the uh, exit temperature whereas the cold fluid is entering from this section and uh, this is going out from the uh, other other end so here the direction of the two fluid direction of the cold fluid and the hot fluid are in the same direction so this is called the parallel flow heat exchanger now if from this point the inlet point to exit point we want to plot the temperature distribution along the length l of the heat exchanger or for that matter we can plot it over the area as well so as it crosses over the surface area what would be the nature of the temperature distribution so we can observe that th1 which is the inlet temperature of the hot fluid will going to reduce and coming to th2 where the cold fluid which is entering at tc1 going to increase temperature so initially the deviation was very high and eventually that will reduce okay so this is the parallel flow or unidirectional flow now if you see the counter flow heat exchanger so this is how a counter flow heat exchanger uh, looks like the configuration so we can observe that this is a particular case where the direction of the flow is reverse okay so here the direction of the cold fluid and here the direction of the hot fluid 
right. So, in this case if we plot in a similar way that is across the length what will happen to the temperature of the two fluid. So, we can find that T H 1 is decreasing to T H 2 whereas, T C 1 going to increase to T C 2 and here the difference between those two temperature are almost almost similar ok delta T 1 and delta T 2 right. So, uh, we can see that how we can distribute them based on the uh, relative direction of the fluid motion. There is another category in this section is cross flow, cross flow heat exchanger ok. So, cross flow heat exchanger uh, this is again can be uh, considered as two type. So, so you can observe that first one which is called the unmixed type ok. So, in, in this what happened that the hot fluid ok, hot fluid which is entering from this pipe ok, hot fluids are entering in this pipe there is a stack of pipe ok. So, it is going and it is exiting from the other end whereas, cold fluid which is entering to the uh, uh, entering in the heat exchanger at 90 degree ok or cross flow direction with the perpendicular to the direction of the flow of the hot fluid right. So, there therefore, we are calling it cross flow heat exchanger and here also uh, there are segments or baffles ok provided in between two entry point of the cold fluid. So, they are not getting mixed as they enter from one channel they are exiting from the other. Although there are not tubes, but there are some partition or baffles or arrangements are provided. So, that the fluids are not getting mixed with each each of the each other streams right. So, these baffles are helping them to uh, channelize the cold fluid also in unidirection. Whereas, if you see the mixed stream then what happened that hot fluid is entering through the tube and going out whereas, the cold fluid is uh, coming in a cross flow direction that is perpendicular direction, but there is no baffles ok. So, there is chance that this fluid stream will be mixed and there will be abrupt temperature variation. So, uh, they are not following any trend and the mix lateral mixing between the cold fluid stream will happen. So, this can be more clearly uh, visualized in this figure. So, this is the cross flow and here the baffles are there. So, both fluids are unmixed and here where the cross flow air is coming over the tubes over the bundle of tubes, but that is mixed right ok. Then we will uh, move on to the next category and also discuss certain features of that uh, uh, the, the heat exchanger based on the relative direction of fluid flow. So, in parallel flow heat exchanger the hot and cold fluid temperature difference goes on decreasing that we have seen and in the counter flow hot and cold fluid temperature difference almost remain constant. In case of cross flow heat exchanger mixed hot stream ensure uniform temperature at any section whereas, unmixed flow pattern of cold fluid result in non-uniform heating. Then design and constructional features that uh, based on this design and constructional features we can have different uh, exchange heat exchanger. For example, concentric tube ok, shell and tube heat exchanger and multiple shell and tube heat exchanger. Concentric tube means there is uh, two 
concentric tube mostly uh, the configuration is where from the inner fluid uh, inner tube the hot fluid is passing and the annular space cold fluid is passing and the heat exchange they may be counter flow parallel flow okay and second is shell and tube heat exchanger okay so shell and tube again can be of many type and uh, shell and tube are uh, generally very uh, bulky arrangement so in industry application or processing plant or or uh, condenser all those cases uh, this kind of uh, configuration shell and tube heat exchanger is used but it is not used in uh, the application where very lightweight uh, configuration is needed for example uh, radiator that is transport application or or uh, in in uh, in aviation so there this kind of systems are not used rather the cross flow systems of uh, you know uh, cross flow system with baffles those kind of systems are more common okay and in case of shell and tube also if you see the most common configuration that is one shell pass one tube pass that means there is one big shell and in the shell here is the uh, one side there is inlet of the fluid and through the tube it is going to the other side and exiting from the outlet right so as the fluid is passing the whole shell the fluid will uh, going to interact with the shell fluid once right so this is one shell pass one tube pass and there are baffles provided not just to hold the tube properly or giving a uh, you know mechanical strength to the uh, to the tubes proper holding to the tubes because otherwise they may uh, you know because of the uh, heavy pressure and because of the uh, flow sometime they get damaged. So, they are providing them the structural support, but also uh, this this baffles are uh, orienting the fluid the shell fluid to a particular direction. So, here the shell fluid is almost coming in a cross flow direction with the tube flow right but if the baffles are not provided so then the shell fluid it is entering from this side and straight away going to the other side so it may be counter flow arrangement in this particular case however through baffles here cross flow arrangements are maintained okay so uh, here what we have done in the shell side we have divided them again to two different shell so what happened the hot fluid that is entering from this channel will go to this two tube first okay and then when it reaches the other side it will redirect to the uh, other two tubes okay and they will again it will flow and then going out from the top whereas the coal fluid which is entering from the bottom side this side. So, again the baffles are provided these are the baffles. So, in a cross flow direction this is going and this is redirecting again and this is coming from the other side right. So, here it is example of one shell pass two tube pass or two shell pass four tube pass we can see because one shell side two tubes are there okay and we have divided into uh, this way ok. So, this is one shell pass one tube pass and this is one shell pass two tube pass. So, one one tube is this to this and then it is redirecting this to this. Now, more complicated configuration can also be done. For example, if you look into this figure, this is two shell pass, four tube pass. Okay, so uh, this is the tube fluid which is entering, and this is one shell. So this is going in this way, coming out of the shell, again entering to the next shell and going out. So this is two shell pass. So this is one shell and this is another. 
2 shell part and 4 tube part. So, this is 1, 2, 3 and 4. Okay. So, different configuration of shell and tube arrangement can be uh, can be done based on requirement and uh, another is called the compact heat exchanger. Now, when we discuss the compact heat exchanger basically we, we deal with the area density function which is one parameter important parameter for heat exchanger and uh, if the area density is very high we call them compact heat exchanger. So, area density is uh, generally uh, you know defined by the surface area available for heat exchange divided by the volume uh, of the liquid that the heat exchanger is going to handle. Okay. So, compact heat exchanger uh, are uh, if, if you know the, um, the value is around 700 to 1000. So, we call them the compact heat exchanger and one example is plate fin or tube fin heat exchanger. Okay. So, so, fins are actually uh, increasing the heat transfer area to a very large extent. So, uh, that is very effective uh, method and another method which is which is the plate heat exchanger. So, plate heat exchanger is like this as we have discussed. So, plate heat exchangers these are uh, again very important one. Okay. This is very important in terms of flexibility because uh, you know the, there are many number of plates which are stacked one after the other and the two fluids are channelized through them uh, in, in just uh, one, uh, one layer and the uh, one layer between the two plates and the other layer between the next two plates like that there will be no mixing. Uh, so, the advantage is that suppose uh, you are implementing this you are using this in your uh, milk chilling plant or regeneration plant and you want to increase the capacity of your plant. So, in that case just you calculate that how many number of plates are required and the extra plates in a series you just join them and you can increase your capacity. Whereas, this kind of arrangement cannot be done for shell and tube kind of uh, heat exchanger. right? So, there is a flexibility that we can get in this case okay? and uh, there is one problem also that in this kind of plate heat exchanger we cannot use uh, two different state of fluid okay? like one vapor and one liquid because uh, you know there is a huge pressure difference involved in the uh, handling the vapors and the liquid because vapors we generally uh, have in the pressure uh, pressure in the range of mega pascal and for the liquid we are having in the kilo pascal range so because of that large pressure variation this plates might be getting damaged if you use them okay so for those cases we can use the uh, other type of condenser like shell and tube and all but for the plate we use strictly two fluid uh, for the stream. So, uh, the basic features what we have uh, learned here is that in concentric tube heat exchanger concentric tubes are used for fluid flow in case of shell and tube the bundles of tubes are enclosed in the shell and heat transfer rate is increased as surface area increase multiple shell and tube heat exchanger uh, if we use then overall heat transfer uh, we can be utilized and the shell is rerouted. Compact heat exchanger are employed when convective heat transfer is uh, associated with one fluid is much smaller than the other fluid. That means, uh, that means uh, compact heat exchangers are employed when the convective heat transfer is associated with one fluid is much smaller than the other fluid. So, in that case suppose uh, we are we are uh, using liquid in in one stream and uh, okay, uh, hot liquid are entering in one stream and we want that through the surface the air
Okay. So, hot feed is entering and this is uh, H, H in and H out. So, if uh, or better to write it as better to write T H in and T H out. So, in that section if we increase the surface area we use fin very uh, thin uh, protruding or extension uh, on the surface. So, those fins are utilized for larger amount of heat transfer because in this side there is air. So, convective heat transfer takes place and that has to be increased uh, to higher amount. So, that is why we use this kind of fin arrangement. Okay. So, these are uh, very compact heat exchanger that we use there. So, physical state of fluid as I said that condenser and evaporator when we use. So, in that case in case of in case of condenser where hot steam is entering okay, hot steam is entering and steam uh, is a vapor and it is coming to the liquid uh, state. So, there is no change in the temperature. So, T H will be throughout constant whereas, T C 1 that is the uh, liquid or air that we are using for uh, for condensing that will increase its value. So, theta is the difference between those cold and hot fluid will gradually reducing. Similarly, for evaporator if we consider. So, in evaporator the refrigerant that is evaporating that will be constant that is uh, going to uh, change from the liquid state to the vapor state and it is taking the heat from the uh, air uh, in, in the in that section for exchanging heat, but the temperature of the cold field will remain constant. So, these are the condenser and evaporator that we can separate uh, based on the physical state of fluid. So, we will stop here, we will continue in the next class. Thank you.